Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today I want to talk about men and women and their relationship with one another. As always, I want you to use your mind and your thinking, not just your feelings. You are created on purpose and with a purpose. I have spoken to this in my talk, God the Irresistible and the Most Important Things in Life. If you believe in the Creator, and you should, and you believe that he has not created the universe and you by mistake, then you believe that you are created on purpose and with a purpose. So since you are created on purpose and with a purpose, then we must explore human beings' purpose. Clearly one of our major purposes is reproduction. The male and female bodies are anatomically designed for reproduction. We are made for each other. Is this controversial? Is this even debatable? No, not in my estimation. We are made for each other. One purpose of our existence is to procreate. Therefore, hindrances or impediments to procreation is contrary to this purpose. I remember as a teenager telling my younger female cousin that men need that women need men. Hearing this, assuming that I was in danger of being a male chauvinist, my aunt ran in and said, don't listen to him. Women don't need men. I said, aunt, you interrupted before I finished my thought. Women need men and men need women. This is a fundamental truth of human existence. Though we need each other, we are quite different. Men are generally more aggressive, and their higher levels of testosterone accounts for this. Women are generally more emotional than men. This is largely due to their higher level of estrogen. You see, men and women have testosterone and estrogen. Men have higher levels of testosterone and lower levels of estrogen, and women have higher levels of estrogen and lower levels of testosterone. And these opposites attract. Men are naturally more imposing than women. Men are larger taller and stronger due to this level of testosterone. Women are generally more compassionate, nurturing, thoughtful, giving, and forgiving than men are. And this plays out physically and socially. Men generally pursue the woman, and the woman usually accepts or declines this offer. And a woman gives herself to a man. This is why sex is more emotional to a woman. She exposes her vulnerability to a man. It is as if you allow someone into your home. They initiate the interaction, and you allow them to come in. In like manner, she allows him, and he obliges. This is, or it should be, a sacred moment for both men and women. They both are embarking on the foundation of the purpose of our existence, to bring about life. Our Creator has made their union the requisite for continuing our existence. This bond is not only to bring forth and preserve life, but to foster life, to nurture life, to develop, to develop that new boy or girl into a righteous, knowledgeable, and productive adult who will continue this cycle. For animals, their method of reproduction is innate. For human beings, it is a choice. Let's discuss attraction a bit. Generally, they are superficial attractions. That you find someone pretty or handsome is natural. The problem comes in with you acting upon your feelings in certain situations. There are seven billion people on earth. It is natural to think that some of them are attractive, even if you are married. Listen, there is someone on this earth that looks exactly like your wife or husband. If you think your husband's features or your wife's features are attractive, then you cannot deny the attractiveness of someone else with those same features. The determining factor is your choice. Yes, you have a choice in who you are with. We all know this, but somehow it has become unclear. When a man chases down a woman that he is attracted to, and upon approaching her, he discovers that she is his cousin, or a minor, or a woman who is his senior, he decides not to pursue her. He suppresses his attraction. When a woman is interested in a man and she finds out that he's a deadbeat or he has no ambition 
or he has no drive, she decides not to get involved with him. Her thinking overtakes her feelings or attractions. We should make decisions with our mind, not simply our hearts. The heart is a compass. It guides you, but your mind determines that you have reached your destination. Don't make decisions that have lifelong effects using feelings. It almost never works. It is a choice to take our purpose in life lightly and use it solely for carnal pleasures or take that purpose as a union of profound importance. For certain, you are free to choose, but you are not free from consequences. There are consequences to having unions without plans of commitment. They include disease, unplanned pregnancies, devaluing of men and women, the devaluing of families, and a broken bond between men and women. These consequences have such profound and considerable damage that it calls for another talk. These things have damaged humanity, communities, and families. Men are, are hunters by nature, but they are also like kids at a candy store. Without supervision, they'll eat all the candy all day and never eat their vegetables if they are not obliged to. The problem is with the scores of women who give themselves away with no promise of commitment from this man while the virtuous woman is asking for a commitment. The more charitable woman is actually devaluing herself and making matters worse for other women. The virtuous woman is now in competition with the charitable woman for this man's attention. The man knows which choice is best, but all too often he picks the charitable woman or he tries to juggle the two. His numbers of partners is not shameful to him, and to other men, but it is to the woman. When a woman's husband or, a per, or her prospective husband asks about her previous relationships and she is obliged to lie, it is because it sheds a negative light on her. The men that she, were, she was intimate with are now simply regrets. But God has given you a means to limit your regrets. Marriage. God prescribes that a man and woman get married and have the bond as their first experience for both of them. In this case, they fulfill each other's expectations. They are not seasoned veterans in a bond that is meant to be sacred and unbroken until death parts the two. How much heartache would we forego if we followed the will and plan of God? How much less would we regret? How fewer people would we have hurt? How few are hurt would we have endured? Choices are free, but consequences are not. To men, I would suggest that we do our best to stop objectifying women and see them as human beings and our equals, not someone to be toyed with and used and disregarded. We all are aware that they have feelings involved, and we should not invoke these feelings if our feelings are not mutual. And do not leave it to say, this is our nature. I am attracted to women. I can't help myself. Men are quick to say, I just I'm just admiring her. I'm not lusting after her. It is recorded that Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him, said, if a man lusts after a woman, it is as if he committed adultery already in his heart. Your thoughts are more than admiration when you are looking at her body. There's a huge difference between being pretty and being sexy. If you see someone that is sexy, then you have already crossed the line. Consider the women, consider that this woman is someone's mother, daughter, sister, or aunt. Would you want that to happen to someone in your family? Well, it has, repeatedly. Men know a good woman when they meet them. Don't let her get away or treat her badly. We don't want to be old and have to settle for whatever we can get. One of my favorite movies is Eternal Sunshine of a Spotless Mind, and it deals with a man played by Jim Carrey trying to get back his whole soulmate that he lost. To women, I would say you have the answer to all the problems between men and women. It is a problem that women must solve, and they must solve it immediately.
It is that women collectively accept and manifest that they are valuable and they have a purpose in life. We don't have to teach abstinence. Teach value. Abstinence is nothing more than expression of the value that you place on yourself. I don't smoke because I value my lungs and my life and the life of others. I don't drink for the same reason. In like manner, I do not sleep with whomever because God's purpose is for men and women to be married and to continue life. I value God's purpose. I value life and I value women. And women do not objectify yourselves and then have the audacity to be disillusioned when men, when men see women as objects. People on social media poke out their hind parts in pictures and then wonder why men are dogs. You are suggesting to him that your best asset is behind you. Your best asset is your whole self, your true self, your mind and soul. They will be around long before your, long after your beauty fades. So value yourself and make men who want to be with you marry you. If he is not interested in marrying you, then he has not really seen your value. Thank you.